That's Not thank bad. you for telling us that. That's that's got to go yeah. in the back pocket. That's that's, that's professionalism. Oh, I yeah. know, I know. You're talking to a professional, so. No, I, I know. I can tell because we're starting an hour late. That's the the sign of a, <laughs> exactly. a true professional. Fashionably late, professionally late. That's right. Well, if you're too That's on time, then you seem too desperate for whatever you're exactly. doing. Exactly. It, it right? looks like mm -hmm. I'm 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 begging you know people to pay attention to me, and you know I need the views. So if I'm late, right. it shows more of like a I don't really care that much. That's right. I'm doing and that's it cool. just to be that, nice. Yeah. That's what cool is. Cool is not caring what other people think. You know? And if you exactly. have a job interview that's really important, show up fashionably late. It's a power move. Yeah, because you it don't need a big that power move. job. Yeah. They respect that. Executives at, at jobs <clears throat> really, really, <laughs> at that too. You can go into a, if you burp during a job interview, it is kind of a power move as well. Because everybody Cause wants to hire, like, they want to hire an influencer, right? And yes. you need to act like an influencer in order to become an influencer. So yeah. if you show up and you have the attitude of an influencer, they're going to be like, that guy, he's got it. Yeah. And and they might not even be able to describe what it is, but they know. They know right. exactly what like it's it's a it is a feeling more so than like a set of a set of descriptions. It's a feeling, and you feel it when it's yeah. there. And what uh, happens when they ask you the typical interview questions like, "What do you think is your greatest weakness?" As a professional person, what do you say? My my greatest weakness is is usually uh, it, it, I say it's how hard every I can, job interview how hard I can punch you, and then I punch him really hard and i say and if that's my greatest weakness you don't want to see my strength yeah, that's right there you go <laughs> yeah no that's genius that's genius yeah. next time i have a job interview because you know i'm expecting super mega to the, the well's running dry so uh yeah. I'll, I'll be i'll be back at chick-fil-a in, in a matter of months so <laughs> well spe speaking of that i was going to tell you uh <laughs> i got a picture from my wife of a certain billboard that uh, oh. she passed by the other day with Audrey. No and, way, she uh, saw it? She saw it in the wild without expecting, like she didn't travel there to see it specifically. She There's a lot of those pro-life billboards around. I'm glad <laughs> she finally saw one. <laughs> she was so excited. Wait, uh, what's, the, what's the billboard? It's the Super Mega Saves the Troops billboard. Where? There's 10 or 11 of them around LA. What the fuck? Really? Yeah. They're, they're in I the valley mainly, Hollywood in the valley. Uh, yeah, that's because where she was in the valley. Yeah, they were they were ex really expensive around Christmas time, so we couldn't really get any over on like the east side or or South LA. It's mainly all just the valley in Hollywood because that's where the cheap billboards are. Yeah, uh, but I billboards aren't that expensive. We didn't realize, so we're gonna start using those to our advantage quite a bit. And in South Carolina, we got. Uh, one of the digital ones, like the big, 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 like 50 foot digital ones oh, off sweet. the freeway. So I went with my sister and her husband over the Christmas like break and, and we went and saw it. It was awesome. That's that amazing. Rules. And you're just joining do... the like leagues of, you're from South Carolina, the, the south of the border million billboards that are speckled along uh, the Oh yeah, road. yeah, you get a, a south of the border billboard another south of the border billboard, pro-life billboard, been the super mega billboard. <laughs> Actually, what's funny is on the digital billboard, it cycles through different ads. <laughs> and the one that was right after ours that would play every time was this like uh, like anti-vaccine mask mandate ad. Oh so it'd be like super mega saves the troops, smash cut to like this like Republican, like anti-vax like, ad. <laughs> I was like, perfect, that's great. And it's like, that okay, rules. I'll check this out and then I'll head on down to the one of three illegal firework outlets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. and and those firework outlets are a sight to behold, and they're very very fun to go to. Yeah. Uh, have you, have you ever actually been to the place south of the border? I haven't been to like... south of the border. I've driven by it, but I've you know, as someone from South Carolina, uh, I don't know a lot of people from South Carolina that actually have been there. It's I think it's more of a tourist thing. Uh, but it's uh, well, been, it's I'll I'll tell been. you now. Wait, mm. you've been to south of the border? Yeah, I Leighton, I've I've traveled quite a bit in my day and seen the world yeah the, the route That's 95 true. corridor is uh is, is pretty central to uh to, to my experience of traveling up and down the east coast of course and so uh on one long trip down to i believe atlanta one year i was like you know what i gotta do it it's that you see fucking signs for it for whatever 200 miles like you gotta go see a shitty zoo why not yeah their billboard game's on point. It really is. Yeah, it's a smash hit. 
We never <laughs> See, sausage like, place. Like, that place could just be there, and if there were no billboards, none of us would talk about it. But the fact that they have so many signs for like 200 miles yep. is yeah. why you know you talk about. And it. They've, I'm so yeah. curious what their billboard bill is like because they're like hundreds of billboards up and down, and then you actually get to south of the border, and it's like, what happened here? It's like it a pig. Feels, it feels like a Fallout game. It must it does. be. It must be worth it, right? Like they well, must bring in enough money from. How those, can they right? make that much money? No. That's the question. I've or, been there no. many times. I, that's the place that I would always stop to get gas, just because like the novelty of it. When I would go from Scad back home, and like they have a, a creepy little arcade. Um, I love a creepy arcade. And there, there, yeah, there's the just there, it's dead. There's nothing going on. So I'm curious, what what's the money maker? Do they still? So the last time I was there was probably more than 20 years ago. Do they still have the like weirdly racist caricatures of Mexican people on the billboards? Dude, that's yeah, their had, bread and yeah, butter. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. How how do they still have that? Because it's South Carolina. Because okay. that's all they have. That's their entire bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's South Carolina. I, when I went home uh, for Christmas. I'm I'm still surprised. I'm like, oh wow, that that thing is still up, or or this is still around, because uh, you know times are changing, and I expect a, a a level of a level of of you know some things being changed. But in South Carolina, it it, it never ceases to uh, amaze me. Some of the things I see is South Carolina like many other red states where the cities are pretty blue, and then yeah. you get out of them, and it's. It's very, very Republican. Is that pretty? I mean, much that's what it every is? state, honestly. Like even yeah, California, that, as blue right. as California is, it's like you drive forty minutes outside of L.A. and you'll see, you know, Trump flags and stuff. Like, yeah. It, yeah. it's literally more so than like states being red or blue. It seems like it. It, it more so has to do with just like largely populated areas, and then that's outside right. of largely populated, like how many, how many like pr very blue rural areas are there like in the middle of like indiana i doubt that there's like a super blue county that has like a very small population yeah i i would bet some like east coast states i mean you're, you're right in general yeah, like vermont maybe that, you're like yeah exactly vermont i mean the, vermont has this weird thing like new hampshire if you've ever been to new hampshire new hampshire tends to go blue but is also pretty conservative in parts whereas vermont is generally more on the on the blue side yeah. of things yeah but yeah, and I think a bunch, you know, a lot of like rural New York is pretty. Oh yeah, I will see actually uh, when when the election happened and and I was following it and I was looking at the the maps. I was actually surprised that South Carolina has increased its number of blue counties by like a ton compared to when I was a kid. Really? When I was a kid, it would just be Charleston, I think, and then even the capital was red, uh, if I remember correctly, and then the capital became blue. That where Ryan's from, so it was. Charleston and then uh, uh, what's Lexington County I think is like the where the capital is Columbia yeah Columbia uh, right so those would be blue but now in the most recent election there were like I think seven or eight blue counties in South Carolina which was very surprising to me yeah. what direction does Myrtle Beach lean uh I blue I believe that's that county starts with a C I think. I love. I yeah. could. I could. I could name every South Carolina county. It's one of my specialties. <laughs> After you look them up and read them, yes. Mer what's your? We, we were talking about Myrtle Beach recently, Matt. What's your take on Myrtle Beach? Are you a fan? Uh, or like, I I have a soft spot in my heart for it. It's the Vegas of the South. It's like, <laughs> uh, it's it's True. somehow it's somehow more trashy than Vegas. Uh, Bro Broadway at the beach, dude. That was my spot. It's, I so I, I I've only been to Myrtle Beach maybe like five six times in my life because it's I grew up about two hours from Myrtle Beach um, and I loved it as a kid because there's so much like mini golf there's there's putt, an putt. unbelievable amount of putt putt there like yep. every other building is putt putt and then uh, I remember seeing a lot of boot stores for some reason but yeah mm -hmm. there's a lot of putt putt uh, and the beach is it's like the closest thing in South Carolina you'll get to like a taste of of uh it's almost like jersey shore well but, but in in a small more poor so area this is what i was going to ask i'm curious so the, the boardwalk i know best is the wildwood jersey shore boardwalk uh which i went to many times growing up 
Um, and I'm curious, okay, I'm going to name things and you tell me if these things that exist on the Jersey Shore boardwalk also exist in Myrtle Beach. I assume they are beach universals. Now, but... it's been a while since I've been to Myrtle Beach, but I can I, I can also never, the... I never went there to go to the beach. I went there for the pup. I didn't either. Yeah, I, I went to go to like, like the oh. Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. Yes, or... yeah. Okay, yeah. when you went, did they have uh, the Magic Quest at Broadway at the beach? Because we went all the time. With the the thing with the yes. wands? Yeah, yeah, the wands. they did. What, what is this? Oh my God. It, um, it's like a gimmicky like attraction. There, there's a couple, I, I think there's a couple around the country. They still but it's exist? Like, it's like an interactive fun house where you get a magic wand, but the magic wand has some kind of like radio control in it. So when you use it on like a drawer, the drawer will like open up on its own. Oh, uh, okay, cool. You know, that type of that type of that type of fun and stuff. It, real price gouge. Like basically it feels yeah. like the precursor to the Harry Potter world where it's like, mm -hmm. Oh, you wanna come here? You wanna pay a million dollars for a wand and a butterbeer and your kid totally wants an outfit too. But yeah, mm -hmm. it, it was also fun because I think when I went maybe one time, uh, just might have been like 2005, 2006. So it's just a bunch of children because you it's timed when you go in. So you have like an hour yeah. maybe. And then it just like shit does not work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've never done like... it. I just heard from from friends. Uh, actually, uh, what, what were you saying, Brian, before I go on with, with this Myrtle Beach? No, no, uh, it, do, it fun, doesn't fun matter. Just keep, just keep going. I, I'd rather not. Like most it. things you say. Yeah, but it's... Uh, right. Thank you. I appreciate you. One, one thing I like to do is is go search Myrtle Beach on Google and then just go to news. And then uh, <laughs> and then you just look at, at you know, the, the, the new trending news of, of Myrtle Beach. Uh, and and there's there's plenty of, of of great things you can find about Myrtle Beach. <laughs> Horn oh my! Okay, well I can't even read that one. The first one I saw is, although I will say it says Horry <laughs> County, but I thought it said Horny County. I did too. No. But you're, I'm assuming you're reading the same headline. I'm <laughs> yeah. Yes, and we're not going to be yes. discussing it. Yeah, yeah. But Horry County is uh, is where Myrtle Beach is. Man right arrested name. for impersonating police officer at middle school. Chick Fil A <laughs> announces new Why Myrtle Beach school? restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> Arkansas-based restaurant chain to add nine sites in Charleston, Myrtle oh, Beach, and Florence. This is the most Southern thing ever. Light snow expected in upstate Columbia and Myrtle Beach areas under winter storm alerts. That means that they'll close down like for like six days. <laughs> for for like a half inch of snow, right? Mm -hmm. No, not even a half inch of snow. Like, like uh, when I was a yeah, when I was a kid, uh, they would close down school if it just got too cold. Like if it got like what's too below. Cold? Uh, like 14, 15 degrees. It gets that um, cold, yeah? Really? Wow. It it can, it can. But it, even if there's like a small chance of snow or a uh, or uh, like a flurry, they'll they'll shut it all down. And I actually, uh, January twenty eighteen, uh, was like the biggest snowstorm that we've had in ages since like the eighties. Mm -hmm. And there was like six inches of snow. It just came down the first week of January, and I got I got trapped. Oh, you're out and there. I fly out there. Then. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I went on the beach and it was just like white. That rules, um, dude. Snow on the beach is the best. You it's so it, cool looking. Like all all the time in New England, you know, it, it snows pretty regularly there. It's just my favorite thing because it's like, what the fuck is happening right now? It feels yeah. so weird. It's so it's so it's such a cool sight to see. Yeah, so much for your global warming, Brian. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I know. I actually, I, I I've co totally reversed course on that. It, it's definitely a hoax. Good. I'm yeah, glad that no, you're on, I, I on the to. right side of history now. When yeah. I moved to California, they, you know, they tried to they tried to make me believe it, and I did for a bit. And then uh, I saw a little bit of snow in South Carolina, and I said, "Okay, I see, I see." Well, I, see. I started listening to this really cool, uh, kind of obscure podcast uh, hosted by this guy Joe Rogan, and he asks a lot of really interesting questions. And I think I think if you listen to it, it might just kind of tickle your mind a little bit, Joe. Joe what? Rogan. R Joe Rogan? Yeah, you should look him up. He's just he's just starting out, but he asks a lot of really smart questions. And yeah, uh, I haven't heard of and this I was guy. like if Joe I Rogan I feel like you've gotten smarter since you've started listening to him, right? That's right. No, that and I didn't think is that was possible, intellect? but it is. An intellectual? Yeah, he's he's a, you know, like look, I want yeah, obviously as you know, I went to to grad school and, and was in academics for a while, but what they don't teach you in grad school is like street smarts, you know? It's not mm. like like it's all book learning and you're in the system and yeah. you get the paper of solidarity. That rewards <laughs> you jumping onto their group thing. 
right? Right. But then you right. have the real guys who are asking the real questions, like Joe Rogan. So I learned like, a lot, and I thought if Joe Rogan can ask questions, why can't I ask questions? And so I asked the question, is climate change real? And the answer is no. Yeah, Brian, uh, do, you, well, do you think we should start selling like late night supplements? Like, oh, should yeah, we that's get a, on that grift? That's a good idea. You guys absolutely should get some like new tropics to sell. We, we've My, been, Super Mega's been approached by, by several companies that are like, oh, you, like, you guys got to promote this new tropic. It makes your brain smarter. And like you, you, you think more, and then you look at like they make it look like this like crazy magic pill, and you look at it and it's just like vitamin B twelve and like a little yeah. bit of like caffeine. It's like no, I don't want to sell pills to children a unless NSP, it's like Xanax or Percocet. NSP got a couple of those emails too, too, like the supplements. I was like, what are we doing? I think here? I think I remember Brent at one point when I worked for Game Grumps. Like we got we got like a sample shipment of these like brain pills and Brent was like yeah I mean these are pretty good though I mean let's, we, we can think about it <laughs> <laughs> and I tried them and I felt no different yeah what a shock haven't you also like literally bought the Alex Jones supplements mm -mm. I have not bought it I was I was mailed I, it was mailed to us by some adoring fans mm -hmm. okay um, all right and it I tastes just, awful you know, I, I saw I, it on your desk yeah. Questions. Well, I, I I didn't purchase that for myself. Uh, okay. I had some concerned fans that were concerned about my testosterone levels, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, they they were kind enough to to purchase that uh, and send it. And Ryan and I have tried it on many occasions uh, in many videos as well. It's disgusting. It it, it makes your tongue uh, kind of go numb. Uh, whatever's in it. And it just tastes. It's a, it's a gross syrup. It's a it's a gross a syrup? syrup. And it's just, yeah. It's like it's like a little dropper. And it's uh, oh, wow. Not a syrup. I guess it's more I of like, like oil. A, I thought they'd be pills. A, a or tincture. Something. Yeah, a tincture. That's what it is. Because it's it's kind of like oily, but it's syrupy too. It's sticky, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it doesn't have a very good flavor. And uh, damn though, I when I when I when I take it, I I do feel my muscles pulsating, and I yeah. get a horrible well, migraine. But that's part of you know the testosterone flowing. I get a migraine that right. lasts about three days. No, that that that, that means it's working. If you know, if anyone right. radi radiates just cool, it's Alex Jones. That guy. Oh, he radiates more than cool. Yeah, <laughs> he's another one of those people that you're talking about, like your your Joseph Rogan guy. You're talking about that. You know, yeah, yeah. Ha you know, they they have like. The they, they know what they're talking about, yes, right? That's right. Yeah. The they the raw the sexual energy of a man who just really knows what he's talking about, and well, preferably, me, I'm familiar. Lobster red, yeah. just yes. a that, shade that, 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 darker that. than lobster, even. Mm. That's richer. Yeah. Veins just popping. Mellow. How many times has Alex Jones been married? Is it less than ten or more than ten? I'm genuine. Uh, afraid. I'd say less than ten. Uh. But but I think I mean my favorite thing regarding Alex Jones' marriage was when he went to court for like a child custody Wait a minute. thing. Oh, hold on. And sorry, sorry to interrupt. Well, actually, no, 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 no. Go thing. ahead. No, no, fin finish your thing, and then I have. I was something. just gonna say he he couldn't remember like basic details about his children during this court this custody <laughs> hearing because he had eaten. He said that he had eaten a bowl of of hot chili right before, and it was oh, so right. spicy that yeah. that he couldn't he couldn't like remember these basic facts about his children. What a the, consummate the chili. asshole. Um, here, okay, oh. here's the thing that made me say, oh my it's God. It's hot chili. Um, <laughs> Age-wise, how would you say Alex Jones and I differ in terms of age? Who is older and by how much? You, but barely. Uh, Wait, what was that, Layden? You, but barely. Well, the okay. way you're framing this question makes me think that the answer has to be you are older. Well, no, Alex. I I, I am a master manipulator, so you fell for my oh, trap. Alex, how old is he? He is one year older than I am. Oh man! But Dude. I would have thought he was like ten—I don't know, ten years old. Yeah, he. That's what a lot of testosterone does to you. It makes yeah. you look. Uh, I know. I I know you're a little bit jealous, Brian, of oh, the yeah, man. No. But you know, you don't have to bring up his age to try to embarrass <laughs> him, because because he looks pretty good for for how old are you? Fifty five. Uh, about yeah yeah I turn yeah. fifty five next month yeah that's right oh I turn twenty six next month that's great am I can I come to your party uh, I'm not having a party oh that's a bummer Matt can I come but, to your party uh 
yeah, yeah. if i had one if well, i had one here I'd, I'd, right. i'll text you like a like a joke like an idea if i were to have a party like what the the idea would be like for the time and date and what the theme is mm -hmm. but it's just mm -hmm. a joke if, that i'm gonna send you that's what funny. would be the You're funniest fine. thing like if i were to bring a snack to this party that's totally a joke <laughs> oh my god if you wanted to like if you really wanted to play it up for like a like a fake party honestly bring bring anything like like cookies or uh mm. like some treat like that and maybe maybe you know it could be a byob if mm -hmm. if i was really joking yes and you could that bring would be like super white funny. claws or even if you brought some liquor you know we got plenty of mixers and you know people i mean we would have plenty of mixers hypothetically and people could hypothetically drink that will you hypothetically text me yeah, I'll text you like right now as a joke, uh, like if I were pretending awesome. to have a party. Wow, it's but the Brian, fake text yeah. that I just received. But Brian, yeah, uh, no, no I'm not having a party. Okay, cool. I'd let cool. you know if I, I was. It. Yeah, it would be my first party. Someday, Ever. I hope to go to a party. Yeah, someday. Well, uh, they're not any fun anyway, so. No, that they don't true. sound like it. There's not a lot Matt, of fun things happening at parties. Matt, the other day I was thinking about how wonderful it was for you, me, and Ryan <clears throat> to get Buffalo Wild Wings and watch Better Call Saul every week. Hmm. What a treat that was. Yeah, it was. And and we have to pick that back up when it comes back for the final season. The final is, season? Is this next yeah, one the final one? Yeah, the next one's the final one. And it's been oh, shit. Uh, you know, postponed forever because of COVID. And then also... Uh, Bob Odenkirk had his heart attack. His little little heart attack on set right. uh but i actually think he just shit his pants and he was embarrassed so he came up with something <laughs> that's what i would do if i was like somewhere like on set and i shit my pants uh i would i would be like boy i have to fake something a lot more serious <laughs> so it doesn't i actually have a whole plan where if i ever shit my pants i would just vomit all over myself so then the, like the vomit would mask the smell of shit and mm -hmm. but then if people notice that well, then I would actually be stuck with vomit and shit in my pants. So, but as but long you, as people don't think I just shit my pants. But you could have shit your pants in response to the vomiting, which I think would have been more of a natural reaction because you're you have a thing about vomit, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. a fetish, yeah. You love to eat. <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. it's it's got a, a very specific texture and flavor that I can't get enough of. No, I know. But the final season of Better Call Saul is, and apparently they're splitting it up into two like half of seasons, they like, are. They like they did with Breaking Bad, yeah. Yeah, but I think Ryan told me the break is only going to be like a couple months, not a whole year. Yeah, okay, uh, so not too bad. Yeah, I'm I'm stoked though. I can't wait. It's supposed to it's supposed to come out early 2022 is the last that I saw. Oh really? But you would think they would have announced it by now. If it were I know, I know. I mean, I think they got to be done filming it by now because they started filming it in 2020. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so th I, they got to hurry, man. Mike is uh he's getting <laughs> yeah. older. I was just and thinking. It's kind of it's kind of yeah. scaring me. Yeah, it's Jonathan like he only... is, he's got to be a, approaching 80, right? He's creeping up there and like it it's getting more noticeable uh like the older he gets and I'm like guys, you got to finish this. You got to finish this fast because <laughs> well, 74. if you were if you were to croak 74. uh you know, I just what would they do? Like would they yeah. just uh Mike Mike flew off to to uh <laughs> San Jose <laughs> for to deal, the rest yeah, of the series. Deal with some friend yeah. stuff. Um, I was yeah. going to say, you're, the pants shitting thing reminds me of uh, the best pants shitting story I've ever heard, which I'm going to try to recount to you now. So this did not happen to me. It happened, so to, it happened to you. Okay. A friend. Yeah. Of okay. So just to be a clear, friend. and I'm going to see if I can tell this. Okay. So uh, this guy uh, whose name, let, let, let's call him uh, Matt. And uh, so so Matt, Matt is, he has a, a, a hot date scheduled with a, a a girl he likes and uh before the date he's not feeling so well feeling like you know he's got some some tummy rumblies Been there. and uh he's like but i really want to see this girl i think i feel good enough to uh to to go go see her so they they start walking you know they they meet up we're walking around town and like 10 minutes into the walking around portion of the date, this guy massively shits his pants. <laughs> and that's a nightmare. Nightmare. So he's like, I have nightmares about that. Actually. I'm not kidding. <laughs> oh yeah. It, it's, it, it's the worst feeling in the world. Right. Uh, so he's like, fuck, I think, but it wasn't bad enough that it was unsalvageable. 
So, what kind of pants are we talking about in this situation? Like, okay. like khaki. If, you, if, if you shit your pants on a date, I don't think it's it's ever salvageable. Well, there's just, shit in oh, your pants. He, no, no, no. But, but <laughs> just listen to the story. Okay. So he, uh, they're they're in like some downtown kind of shopping district, and uh, this guy is like, you know, the wheels are, are spinning in his brain. He's like, what do I do? What do I do? And they pass a gap. And so he says to the, mm. the girl he's with, he's like, oh, you know what? I'm really sorry to do this, but I just remembered uh, <laughs> my cousin's birthday <laughs> is tomorrow. And I just, I want to, his favorite store is The Gap. I just want to go in like real, real quick <laughs> to like, uh, to, 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 to get something for him. And the girl's like, okay, I guess. So they walk into The Gap together and this guy he goes, Wait, so he, but he's with her and he has shit in his pants right now. <laughs> he, he does. That's correct. But it's not like. She's already noticed then. There's no way has, you can stand up not, to someone and she, have shit in your pants and they don't well, notice. Look, obviously I'm not inside this girl's head. So I can't, I can't say what she did or didn't know. No one can really say, and this is an interesting point we should get back to later. No one can really say what another human does or doesn't know. Right. But yeah, the way yeah. this story was recounted to me, the girl did not know. So. So he goes in the gap. And he makes a beeline for the pants. But he's like, this would be so weird if I just walk into the gap to buy a pair of pants for no reason. So he's like, oh, I guess he's got to put them on, too. Well, we're getting to that. So. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, so he's like, OK, I'll get something else. He gets a he gets a shirt. You know, he's trying to move this whole process along. So he, he goes up to the to the cashier. Wait, he gets a right? shirt. He just goes. He picks out a shirt, too. So he's, he walks up to the. Uh, uh, cash register. He got pants, shirt. I think he said he got a couple other things too. And he goes up to the cash register and he's checking out. He's like, "Hey, sorry, I'm really in a rush here." Because obviously, you know, there's a there's a there's a clock counting down to when this becomes a visible and possibly <laughs> olfactory uh, problem. So how was it? Uh, how was it already not? <laughs> it's shit. In his I have pants. so many questions. I, look, all I can tell you is that the way this story was told to me, it was not yet a problem. <laughs> I, I, I can't answer it. I wasn't there. So uh, so he rushes up to the cash register, tells the girl, like, hey, just wait here for a second. I'll be right back. Just going to check out. Okay. Okay. Goes up to the cash register uh, and, and is like, hey, can we just hurry this along? I just want all this stuff. Uh, and he's like, and the cashier is like, no problem. Puts the stuff in a bag. Uh, he checks out and, and goes. And now they're they're okay. going to take the, the, the train, uh, the, the subway to their next destination. So he's like, okay, this is my moment. Because I can't, by the way, he's like, I can't go to the dressing room because I said this is for my cousin, right? Because also it would be a, like a, a kind of a selfish, right. weird act to mm -hmm. on a date be like, actually, I'm going to go, you know, I'm just going to go buy some clothes for myself, at least in this guy's mind. So, well, couldn't they just go clothes shopping? Like that's a fun that date wasn't, activity. But I think they had to be somewhere maybe. I don't really recall. But they have to get on the subway to go to the next stop. So he's okay. like, okay, this is my deal. You know how on the, if you've ever been on the New York subway, you can go between the cars, right? Well, you yeah, and also the New York subway already smells like shit. So <laughs> yeah, like shit. So he's gonna know. So uh, he he's like, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get on the train, and I'm gonna go between the cars. I'm gonna just excuse myself for a second. I'm gonna go between the cars, change real quick there, get back on. All right, this is the guy's plan. So they get on the train. He says, "Hey, just a uh, just a second. I think I see. I think I see someone I know in that in that car there. Just hold on. I'll be right back." So he pops between the the set of cars. At this point, his pants are like rank with shit. So <laughs> yeah, she's noticed, dude. Okay, maybe so. I can't comment on this, and I have established it. So, I don't know. Anyway, he uh, he's like, I got to get these things off. He takes off his like his pants, takes off his underwear, I presume. You know, kind of cleans himself up. And he's like, what well, am he's got to take the, I mean, you can't just take the pants off and leave the underwear full of shit. So. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. Thank he's got to take I, it all off. I, I see we have a fellow strategist. That's exactly <laughs> right. So, oh, I've thought through this stuff. I know, I know how it works. Everyone's thought through this exact scenario. So he he like takes he's like I got this these pants full of shit now. What am I going to do? Oh, I'm on the subway. He just throws them off the train. Okay, just Genius. throws throws, right. throws them off. Reaches into the Gap bag to find nothing but shirts. <laughs> oh my god! And at this point, he has a decision <laughs> to make, which is. <laughs> what do I do? Now, this is before there was cell phone reception in the subway. 
Okay. Oh. So this is before the cell phone reception in the subway. He's like, what do I do at this point? And his brain says, don't go back. <laughs> so he stands in between the car, kind of hiding, and just lets this girl go until the end of the line on the subway. And she never <laughs> called him again. That's the best way it could have ended, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Minus minus yeah. putting pants on, but I have so many questions here because look, yeah. we all do. Why? What? So if he if but she would first of all, there's no way you you massively shit your pants and then have the time to walk around to the gap, okay, so back to the train station, and no one smells shit. When when I when I yeah. shit my pants, I smell it immediately. Just for yeah. personal experience. So, so, and so does everybody else around me. I think yeah. that's a good point. If the story is true as it was presented to me, it may have not been a massive shit, but just like a teeny little shit. Okay. A little bit I mean, a, a, a shart is a much different story than full on. You know what? You're you're right. Like, did he have that... a log of shit in his pants? Or are we talking like a like a Look, I, I'd love to be able to to answer this. I presume from the stomach troubles it was probably uh, a little bit of a shart, yeah. Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah. Now now also uh, didn't he? Why didn't he go in to buy pants? Why do you only have shirts? <laughs> he did. Yeah. The cashier forgot to put them in the bag. Oh, oh, wow, wow! That is that's the worst time that ever could have happened. And also, right. uh, so what? What? It, what? It, yeah, the the girl obviously gets off the train without him. But then, what does he do if he has no pants? Well, that's a very <laughs> good question. It's also New York. He's so now. In, oh yeah, fit right true. in. Yeah. Wow. That is, I mean, he had shirts, so he could like tie something around his waist. Right, he right. could, he could, he could have a t-shirt on as pants and yeah. still smell like shit. That's, uh, <laughs> that's incredible. I had another question about this um, discussion group. What, what, yeah. what was the other yeah. question? I honestly, just had? honestly, you're on a date. You shit your pants. You just tell them, them right? <laughs> just yes, be like, no, look, that, the, the the sane thing to do. There's no way around it. There's no. no way around it. The same thing to do, even if you don't want to tell them, you say. I'm really sorry. I'm not feeling well. I I, I, I want to see you again, but I just have to go like right now. Right Even now. If, you, if you don't want to tell him, you don't make up this elaborate excuse. You just say, I'm so sorry. I don't feel good. Because go. that's there's that's one why scenario I in which you shit your pants. And then yeah. there's another where you shit your pants and you're a liar. <laughs> right. That's right. And you ghosted the because, you know, like he disappeared yeah. and she's like, well, OK. And but she obviously knew he shit his pants. So on this date, he shit well, his pants and. Ghosted Maybe her. all the, so and now yeah. on another podcast, this woman's telling a story about the time that she went on a date with the guy and he shit his pants and then ghosted and her. Ghosted her, yeah, yeah, Ghost, yeah. But that, I believe that's on the Ghost Shitters cast. Mm -hmm. I when was the last time I shit my pants? Um, well, let me check actually, my it's, records. It's been a while. It's been a while, last actually. Time. Believe yeah. it or not, it, there a lot of it happened in 2020. <laughs> oh my god it's 2022 i was i was like last year was 2020 no a lot yeah, of it yeah. happened in 2021 sorry mm -hmm. right 2020 whenever i had my asshole surgery there was there was a lot of that following. oh that's right i for, that's right yeah horrible week worst week of my life after that they they, they only gave me uh tylenol for some reason Ooh. yeah i didn't know you were having it and then you texted me i had surgery on my asshole one night <laughs> yeah i just i needed someone to talk to man it was rough no, it I'm hurt not. really, really, really bad. That's why they call me the butthole guy. Yeah. Didn't you also I mean, get I... nose surgery recently? Yes, Somebody I recently? got nose surgery at the beginning of last year uh, because my septum was like so deviated that on the X-ray you couldn't even see the uh, like the clear a pat passage. It was just really? like one passage and then just completely just. How much oh better God. is your life now? Because I also oh, desperately need this surgery. It is oh, it, life changing. It was incredible because the recovery was nothing like the recovery was fine i felt fine the same day uh and sure. for that they gave me a vicodin prescription and i'm like why did why did they give me vicodin for this painless recovery when my asshole was <laughs> was literally like full of stitches and and just it's the most painful thing in the world and they give me tylenol it, it didn't make any sense mm -hmm. um but yeah i tell you what uh the nose thing is like right when they woke me up in the hospital, they were like, take a deep breath. And I was like, because it used to be if I covered up this nostril and I breathed in, it would just be like, Real? Is like that you couldn't even, I couldn't even breathe out of it really. Was that that's... because of an accident or that's just how you were built? 
No, it's just how it's always been. Um, and I find myself a lot less tired nowadays uh, because I think that I had getting... a lot of sleep. I still have a lot of sleep issues, but uh, I think that before I had that nose surgery, a lot of my sleep issues where I just wasn't getting enough yeah, oxygen totally. at night. Because they sure. said I had sleep apnea after doing a sleep study. And I, I think that dude, they just mis I have mistook sleep it. Apnea. Yeah. Well, I, they, I got the CPAP machine. I just I got, got the Pap one. smear machine and everything, and I think that they, <laughs> I think that they like just mistook it for sleep apnea uh, yeah. because I have no other symptoms of sleep apnea, and I've and yeah. I you know, this is my la my last podcast before I die of sleep apnea. Right. Tonight. But, uh, <laughs> also, I, I would narcolepsy, but I would imagine it. sleep apnea is it probably gets more common as you get older. It's probably unusual to have sleep apnea at like 25 or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of sleep. I have insomnia and I have narcolepsy, but on the sleep test, they just said I had sleep apnea. Uh, and I'm guessing it's because my, my oxygen flow, yeah. I would always wake up because I think that I, I would breathe through my nose and I wouldn't get enough oxygen, so I'd wake myself up, which probably looks the same on the sleep study as, you know, sleep apnea where you stop breathing. Yeah, I, I yeah, just my, was I, I have yeah, needed ahead. that surgery for like, so long and i was so going i was going to get it and then it was march 2020 and i just need to do it because i know that it will significantly improve my life because i straight so up cannot, cannot breathe out of my nose which is, is great it the when same? you do a podcast can you it's, cover up like the one that works and try to breathe through yeah i'm one? not gonna i'm not gonna do it on this show but it, it's a grim thing if i tilted my head back you would see how bad it is i yeah I love, you could you could see visible? it when you looked up like yeah on mine, on mine, like one nostril was was regular size, and the other one on the inside was just a slit. Whoa! Yeah, my, it, my, it, mine it are literally both like did this. It was crazy. a curve like that. Mine are both. And like I have Voldemort's slits. Yeah, and oh. I got I got a I got a uh, like a scan of my mm -hmm. like an X ray from the top to see another mm -hmm. view, and uh, it's crazy how like I have X rays of it still. Uh, of my of my head. I'm gonna see if I can find it because it was it was. And just, you've had please. that ever since you were little, like your as whole life. As far as I can remember, yeah. And crazy. Being able to breathe is just. It's oh, one it's of the. Great. It's. I'm so it's jealous. Great. It's great. It's it's yeah. almost it's almost like it's one of the crucial things you need in your I, in your life. I just heard some interview with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and apparently he suffered from migraines like all during his basketball career, and then afterwards someone was like well maybe that's because you're not getting enough oxygen and he had some kind of like oxygen you know some surgery to expand his uh, mm -hmm. how much oxygen he was getting and it was just like a crucial thing and he found out about that in his like early 40s so i had not realized that he was playing as a professional basketball player for years while suffering debilitating migraine headaches oh yeah, it it like, it sucks. It it absolutely sucks not being able to breathe out of your and like you just get used to it also. So like it doesn't uh, it doesn't feel like out of the usual, out of the ordinary. Yeah. Um, Thank you for posting yeah. this very flattering image, Matt. Is it flat? Oh. I didn't even actually see how flattering it was Did you on my it? Instagram story. You oh, look no, great. No. You, you looks oh. fine. Thanks. Oh, okay. I got it March twenty, March twelfth, twenty twenty one. Uh, let me let me see. So it hasn't even been a year. Wow. I whenever I whenever I do get the surgery, I'm gonna insist that the doctor take pictures of my face while it's like cut open and shit. Oh, I got I got uh, a good picture. Like shortly when I got home, my nose was just blood pouring blood. And uh, yeah. I got I got a good picture on my Instagram story. Let me see if I can actually find. I'll show you guys real. Oh quick. yeah, is it just you with like a super bloody nose? Yeah, and it's like I, all over my. I recall this. Yeah. Oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Um. There, here's the X-rays. Okay, I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, you could kind of see like the. No, <laughs> Here, can you see? Can you see yep. like how mm -hmm. deviated it is on one I, side? I, I you're you have frozen for me, so I can't yeah. see it yet. Wow, look at can that! You that's your head, Brian? dude. No, no, I know. Yeah, that's Brian. Rough. You're frozen too. Yeah, it just does this sometimes because it drops the. Dang bandwidth. it! And then I have. Uh, oh yeah, here is the from the top down the septum Damn, reveal. Damn, dude! It's supposed to be two clear passageways, but you can only see. Oh, there it is! Oh my god! See how that's like there's not even a clear passageway on the second one? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, like, it was and that's right after when I got out of surgery and I got oh. home. 
That's a vibe. That's oh, that's, but, that's very wait. 2012 Tumblr aesthetic of you. Yeah, <laughs> they put a stint up my nose. They put like this huge stint that I didn't know was was that big up there. And then when I had to get it removed, they took it and they pulled it out, and it was like that big. It was awesome. Crazy. The it's things that, that were coming we out of my nose little... after that surgery were awesome. I bet. Yeah, very satisfying, I'm sure. Very so this... satisfying, just unbelievable. You were asking me if that's the surgery I needed to get, which it is. Oh, yes. I need to I need to get a full functional rhinoplasty, mm -hmm. which yep. you would call it a rhinoplasty, but insurance doesn't cover it unless you call it a functional one. Really? Yeah. Because otherwise they think it's just plastic Septoplasty? Surgery. Yeah, well, because like a rhinoplasty is different from a septoplasty. I have to do like a full rhinoplasty because it's not only like my septum's fucked, but also both nasal canals are collapsed and also oh I have God. cysts. Mm. So, oh shit! Oh, wow. Yeah, they they they. <laughs> I didn't have any like uh, cartilage in my septum where it needed to be. It was just like floppy, so they had to put cartilage in my septum. Did you try rubbing it? Yeah, yeah, and it you know it didn't. Yeah. Still nothing. So, but now I have cartilage where there used to not be cartilage, and it's a weird feeling. And they, they told me, did they have to put new cartilage in, or did your nose just make it? Uh, no, they had to put it in, but they got it from my my septum because it was curved. So when they straightened it out, you know, there was extra because that's the wild. curved line. Wow, what does extra cartilage look like? Is it just sort of? Well, it's it's in my nose now. It's it's like the very bottom tip of my nose, and it uh. It was great surgery. Can't recommend it enough. I re I love surgery. It was fantastic. I'm so glad that we've covered so many topics that will be very easy to listen to, to oh for anybody God. who's squeamish yeah. about body stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, shitting, shitting of the pants. Well, I, I, okay. I think that I I've every podcast I go on, even I, I didn't even bring it up this time. It just somehow always turns to something about shitting. Every mm -hmm. time I'm a guest, there's something about shitting pants or. I actually shit my pants at the Game Grumps office once. Um, I mean, haven't we all? Yeah, I shit my. It was it was late at night, uh, and and Ryan and I were at the office recording some super mega content, mm -hmm. and uh, I was like, "Yo, Ryan, check this out!" And I like turned around to like like rip ass at him, and then I just shit my pants. <laughs> uh, and I was like, I was like, "Oh shit!" And I was like, "Ryan, did I shit my pants?" He's like, "Yeah, I can see it." Uh, so. Ryan, being the, the good friend he is, uh, got up and drove back to our apartment uh, and FaceTimed me <laughs> and got me a pair of underwear and a oh pair of God. pants and sweetheart. drove back. Uh, but we had, ordered, we had ordered food. Um, <laughs> so I was, I was really scared that the food was going to get there before Ryan was going to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just walked around the, the Game Grumps office <laughs> butt-ass naked. Uh, for for about twenty minutes, waiting for Ryan to bring me back non shit pants. Wow! And this is like uh, late at night or something. Uh, it's probably like eight or nine p.m. Mm -hmm. But this was before the office was like re renovated. This was this was old school right. Trump's right, office. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Hmm. Well, that's should my, we introduce my... the show now that we've yes. extensively talked yeah. about shitting our pants? Yeah, let's do it because this is a big episode, right? This is episode number one hundred. <laughs> I'm so, I completely show. I was having such a good time hanging out that I forgot that this is like a milestone episode and mm -hmm. now if anybody's ever like one. hey go listen to the episode 100 of Late Night and it's 50 yeah. minutes of us talking about shitting our pants and and nasal and butthole surgery. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So everybody Little beach. Uh this is episode 100 of Late Night with Brian Wacht. Over here we have Layton Gray. Hey, that's me. The one who just spoke. That was Brian. What's up? Mystery guest. 100th yep. mystery guest. It's me. Who the fuck are you? It's me. And your name is? Matthew Watson. Wow. The, and it's Matt, me. Describe yourself in one or two sentences. One or two sentences? Yeah. Um, I am an influencer who influences uh, on the internet with his influence uh seeing uh comedy. i would have described you as a flirty bad boy with no regard oh. for human decency brian well that that's what i describe myself when i'm not on not on a podcast mm -hmm. you know i describe myself as a little bit of a bad boy i know a thing or two about motorcycles no you're one of the original bad boys of the internet i believe that's true. yes yeah. yes yes i am uh, and uh that's something that i'll always i'll always keep it at heart with me 
Well, we are very, very excited to have you on uh, on the show uh, this week, especially for such a milestone episode. So, yeah, thank you for for being here with us. Absolutely, thank you for thank you guys for having me. Uh, I've I've been meaning to come on this podcast for for quite some time now. For um, one hundred episodes, one hundred whole episodes. <laughs> yeah, you guys asked me in the very beginning, and then they've asked me throughout, and for some reason, it's always it's always slipped through the cracks. We get it. We're all busy. Yeah. But but now you know when you guys invited me and you're like it's the hundredth episode I felt I was like honored to to be to be so I said you know what f it I'm 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 going on and here you are and it's episode one hundred so my agent was trying to stop me the whole time no, that's, that's why, why you I haven't but I fired him don't listen to agents. Uh, his name was Brent he's gone now <laughs> uh, we, it's really well, funny that he would tell you that considering he was on the show last week well that's why he didn't want to be upstaged. Yep. True. That's that's how Brent's a little son of a bitch, and he gets very jealous very easy. <laughs> he think he always thinks everyone else is going to steal the steal the stage from him. Did he so, did did he tell you? Because he told us and he about told the charges the that he's facing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are pretty bad. Yeah, uh, but I don't think he wants us to talk about those. I, I, as his lawyer, I can't comment on them. Uh, <laughs> he he was reluctant to be on this show because of a time he was on your show. Do you know about oh. this? Uh, well, he's been on the show. He's been on our show several times. Uh, m- always uninvited, actually. Right. Um, right. So well, he can't really get mad at anything from our show when he <laughs> when he put himself in the situation. No. I mean, there, he's he's been talked about on our show a lot. Yeah. So he he came on your show and said, "I I didn't even know this was a an incident. I don't think it really was. I think he just read comments when he shouldn't have. He said something penis. about being yeah. Well, believe me, we talked extensively about his very large and very disgusting penis. Yes. Um, but he was on your show and he said something about being proud of you guys for being successful. And apparently, uh, certain people got mad at him saying that. Right, because people wanted us to not be successful, and they they want us to they want to kick us down every chance they get. Yeah. So hearing somebody encourage us was very upsetting for them. Did, are, are you aware that that was a thing people were upset about, or had you not heard that before? Uh, when when he congratulated us for like uh being more popular and successful than the game drums. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, I'm referring to. That's no, what. no, yeah. He, I think he briefly mentioned it to me once that uh people thought he was he was uh saying it like in a condescending way right but no i i, I know brent would never be condescending no never <laughs> but brent, it's brent yeah i love brent so much though brent is brent is truly someone special uh really truly is. a special man and it, it's it's crazy to think that i've known brent now uh almost seven years uh, right oh, that, yeah how how many people wow. can you say have ba- bailed you out of jail uh well, that's true yeah just brent brent well, he didn't pay any bail, so I can't give him that credit. There was no bail to be paid. <laughs> sure. I was only detained, not arrested. Yeah. Um, unlike Brent. Uh, but, yeah. yeah. You know, he's a great guy. Great guy. I love Brent. And, you know, he's got a problem downstairs that he needs to really address. <laughs> and a bar of soap would just be a simple solution, but he doesn't, you know, try telling him. But it's he, all right. He hates it. It's not that he doesn't like the idea of soap. He doesn't like the soap industry. He has some moral uh, right. I get uh, that, objections but to it, but yeah. Well, you don't even need soap. I mean, just some, just some, some hot water. Well, you, you know, will do. Think, Maybe a little eucalyptus oil. Yeah, I've tried to have this discussion with him, but he just refuses we to engage. Have. You know, you, I'm sure you've, you've tried. He just walks away. Yeah, you, we had to make it public at some point uh, to to get more word out there. Um, Raise but, awareness. Yeah. Start a uh, GoFundMe. Well, we love we love spreading wildly. Uh, untrue and unflattering rumors about uh people in our life mm-hmm. yeah uh, so the internet you know we're we're really professional in the way that we have absolutely zero professionalism and so i wanted to ask somebody else who is also an unprofessional who's been podcasting longer than we have considerably like what episode of of the show are you guys on uh after i hang up this call i have to go edit episode 280 wow god damn that's awesome Congratulations. Thank I'm you. I'm so almost, proud of you guys. <laughs> oh, oh, thank shit. you. Oh, shit. You're, me. You're fucked, so, Layton. You're fucked. It's, it's, it's fun. I love, I, love, I love podcasting, and I'm excited to be as far as we are. I honestly, I, I didn't think we would get to uh, episode 280 even. So Yeah. I did not think well, that we personally would get past episode five, so. 
Hey, look at there, there was some tension go. early on that. Yeah, I wouldn't say it got resolved so much as ignored. Brian brings his Brian. I, you got to not bring in the politics. Who is messaging me? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, I'm all. I also just got like ten messages from someone. Who? Who is? Where is this? But I didn't. Well, wow. where is this coming from? I. Where am I getting all these? All these? All these dings from? Are they about a party? General. Where? Who is doing this? Oh, I see. I see. I say. I'm just saying. It's in a Discord server I'm in. Oh, I see. For epic. Dude, SMP, you got to. You got to turn off the. Oh. the the discord notifications uh, it makes your life so much easier well it's i normally I, I i have them off i'm just trying to i don't know what's today they're, they're being extra uh, uh shut up hold on right click mute server until i turn it back on uninstall discord i love discord i only i only started really using it recently but but what were you what were you saying, Leighton? You were asking me a question about professionalism. Oh, I was gonna ask. And how did I get so professional? From from one big dick pod, podcaster to another. Um, mm hmm. How how do you do it? What's what's your secret? What's the secret to to keeping the 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 spice in a podcast over two hundred and eighty episodes? How do you how do you keep things interesting? Mm. Well, the. The, the secret is being contractually ob obligated to release a podcast every single week mm -hmm. by, a, by a large corporation or else we'll face legal punishments. Um, <laughs> so that's that's the real answer. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I, I, I just what I used to worry about earlier in the podcast around, especially, I guess, around episode 100 was like talking about fuck, like we're gonna, and nasal surgery. We're going to run out of things to talk about, like. Like how how are we just going to keep sitting down every week and talking? Uh, and then I realized it's impossible to run out of things to talk about, especially when you can talk about things like shitting. Um, <laughs> there's always something to talk about. Mm -hmm. So Ryan and I uh, just sit down and just fucking go for it. We never plan a podcast with topics or anything. We just sit down, turn on the mics, and go. And I don't know. It's never changed. It's always been the same process of recording and just sitting and talking with each other. Yeah. And that's what it will always stay. So I guess, I guess the reason that the spark is there is because we are genuinely good friends and we enjoy making each other laugh and talking. And then that is, yeah. that's what keeps it going. If we didn't like each other, if it was just a business thing, uh, kind of like what you guys have going, it would be, it no, would be sorry. difficult. You, I understand. To, to be fair, you're thinking about ninja sex party. Yeah, that's that. Sorry. Sorry. That's what I meant. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I think the friendship is a, if you do a podcast or just anything with someone that you're good friends with, um, there's a lot of fun chemistry. It could put a strain on a friendship for sure. Um, Ryan and I don't talk outside of super mega ever, but, uh, it's fun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, because at some point you trade friendship for money and that's right, just a right. choice you, yeah. you, you can make. And it's, it's you'd a, much rather it's have money over easy. friendship. That's right. Cause look, you can get more friends. You can't get more money. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You it's know, the only way to get more money. Just trade all friend for money. That's yeah, right. it's just what I've been doing. Honestly, it. the idea. I've, I've read the art of the deal. Well, <laughs> what you should do <laughs> is you go down your friend list and you think, how can I monetize this relationship, right? Mm -hmm. In order, and then you start a project with everyone on your friend list. Yeah, and and make some make some coin. And eventually, coin. you burn out and you die. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But you made some coin in the process. That's right. You know, friends, and that's that's why you need a prenup. Friends come and go, but money is forever. Yeah, I think is what they say. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you guys, I can tell have have great chemistry. It's all about doing it with someone that's fun, that has that has good chemistry with you. Yeah, Ryan and I uh, have 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 chemistry. No, you I have like to think forever. Not like sexual uh, tension chemistry, but right. like we just you know we we know how to rip off of each other. Uh, so. We use what, that to our advantage. What I my favorite thing about you guys is you take big swings, like you do big awesome things, like with the NASCAR thing, and and you wrote a book, and you know you 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 take big chances that I think pay off more off more often than not, and even when they don't, they're at least interesting and fun. And Thank you. It's it, honestly when when I think about like you know whatever the next year or so, Leighton and I were kind of talking about this yesterday. Uh, what we want to do, I kind of I use you guys as an example of look here. Here are people who are like really taking some chances, and 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 doing fun and genuinely interesting and new stuff. So I'm Thank I'm you. so impressed with you guys. Uh, Thank in, you so much, in man. In many many ways, but 
Make it it, so it also doesn't hurt yeah. that you two are like two of the most aggressively funny people I've ever encountered. <laughs> oh, oh thank you. Yeah, yeah. You guys are you guys are you guys are gonna make me tear up. Yeah, cry, bitch. <laughs> I, I'm thinking about it right now. Uh, that's, our, that's our new segment. It's just called yes, cry, bitch. cry, bitch. It's where we compliment someone into crying. Yeah, like you compliment that. them to get them like in a in a safe position and open up, just so you can tear them and down just, shortly yeah. after. We in the uh, industry call that love bombing. Hell yeah, exactly. We do. I that's that's something that we we try to do is like uh, we try to every year pick out a couple things that are like big, mm-hmm. where it's like. Oh, this is just we we like being known as like taking a bit too far or like like wouldn't it be crazy if we did this and then yes. doing it like the NASCAR thing was it was an example of like I don't think any other YouTubers have ever gotten you know a NASCAR yeah. before which I actually learned that if you call it a NASCAR NASCAR fans get very mad because it's not <laughs> a NASCAR NASCAR is the company it's a fast it's car. a it's a it's a race car that's in a NASCAR race mm. so I still call it a NASCAR just because it's you know it's you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's I like, like to piss them off. It's like the assholes who get mad when you say Legos. You know, you're supposed to say Legos. No, you're supposed to say Lego bricks. What? So the plural. Well, who this is if you pick up what I would call a Lego, people would be like, oh, that's, "That's not a Lego, a Lego brick. That's a Lego brick. Lego's the brand. Lego's the brand, and okay. the things are bricks." So, I feel like if well, you you're don't somebody say a Coca-Cola. who... Oh, yeah, you do, actually. You do. You say this for a million say... other fucking things. It's like, you know, whatever. I bought a Honda. No they know what I'm like, talking about, though. You know That's what the I'm thing with about. the English language. Is, 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 is If they don't understand that, then they're an idiot. It's, it's Tracy context Chapman's of... NASCAR. <laughs> no. <Exactly. laughs> I was yeah, just well, sitting that's... on that one for like a full yeah, 60 seconds. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, that's uh, how podcasting works. It yep. is. You think of something funny, and then you wait, and then if you don't get a chance to, if the moment passes, then you forget it, and then you, then you linger on it for the rest of the podcast. Like, what was I gonna say? Um, what, what's something? Maybe you don't want to say it because it's it's upcoming. But what, what, what's something? Can you think of a big chance you wanted to take that you were like, eh, nah, that's that that's going too far, or we can't do it, or or something like that? Does anything jump? Yeah. Out like that? Uh, oh, there's a couple. A couple of. Well, they're not off the table, but we we've you know we've been toying with the idea of going to Antarctica. Mm-hmm. Um, we've uh, we got we do have some big ones coming up that are that are cool. I don't really want to talk about, right, but uh, I think big ones that we that we scrapped because it just didn't seem. We were gonna go skydiving. I mean, that's not that big, but Ryan is deathly afraid. Oh, of, dude, I, of of that scares the hell out of me. Which I don't blame him at all. I mean, it's terrifying. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think uh, over some we, – we've thought about – we've joked about sponsoring, like, a Little League team. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but just that wasn't really worth it. I'm trying to – I, I, I don't think we have anything, like, that we've really scrapped, like, fully. Yeah. Because usually instead of fully scrapping, we'll just kind of put it on the back burner, and then if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I was going to say, the other thing that to me is so cool about what you do is you very much have the uh, spirit of, well, let's just fucking do it. Like like with your music yeah. stuff, which is great. I love that. Thank you. You know, you were like texting me about mixing and stuff and you're like, eh, I'm just going to learn it myself. Like that is li- literally what, when I think about what kind of dad I want to be, that's the one of the values I want to instill in Audrey is the like, I can do I can learn it. I can do it. You know, so you're saying I'd be a good son? I mean, look, we are taking applications at the moment. If you're looking to get adopted, now... I could have a father that would say he's proud of me? No, I mean, we'll talk. Depends okay. how much you're willing to pay. Okay. But, like, you there, there's a for price for, for everything. Okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, look, if you want to live here... It, it would be nice to have a father that would say that. It'd be nice to have once. an intermediary between me and Rachel, too. Okay. Well, I can do that. Yeah. I'll do that for free. It's always been a dream of mine. Well, thank you. Um, but it, but it, it, honestly, though, I, I one of the things I want to teach Audrey is like is this spirit of I'm just going to learn it and do it, which is something that I feel like is is very hard to to, to teach people. Like some people have that as like that vibe, and some people don't. You can learn mm. it, of course, but um, I, I think a lot. You know, of course, I uh, use my academic experience too. This is like the the difference between what we would call like an undergrad and a grad student in terms of 
uh, just kind of general ethos. Like a grad right. student aesthetic is, so the, the, like an undergrad or a high school student will often say, well, nobody taught me. I, I, did, I don't know it because nobody taught me. And it's not my fault. I don't know it. And, and there is a point to which that's true, of course, if you're right. you know, very early on. It, what you try to teach people as they go on in their academic careers is no one's going to teach you. You just have to go learn it. Like, go learn it yourself and figure it out. And right. it's ultimately not anyone else's responsibility for what you do or don't know. Or in the case of what you do, what you do or don't create. Like, you had an interest in music and you were like, I'm going to try this and do it. And I, I love that. I think that's incredible. Thank you. That means a lot. I owe a lot of that to my late friend, Daniel, because he yeah. he would uh, want to, like, figure out how to do something. Like, there'd be something that he would, you know, when when we would make videos and stuff, he'd be like, uh, there'd be, like, a special effect we need to learn. He'd be like, oh, I'll figure out how to do it. And then he would teach himself really quick. Yeah. And that was always super inspiring to me. Um, yeah. So I, I carry that with me a lot, that, that mindset of... Uh, because I, you know, if you want to learn how to do something, no matter who you are, you if you put your mind to it, you can. Totally, I, so, I sound like a like high school inspirational. <laughs> no, but uh, it, it's also coach. like. The but way... it's, it is true. It's it's if you if you have the will, like the want to do it, you you can find a way to make it happen. Totally, absolutely. It, it's also the way that you talk to yourself about it, because I feel like maybe both of you get this uh, in life in general of people being like, "Oh, I could never do that." Um, but like, I don't know if you keep if telling you tell yourself, yourself I could that, never yeah. do that. Like there are many, many things in my life that have thought like, oh, I can never do that. But then you, it's just time and patience and not everybody has time. Like, you know, absolutely time time is a luxury to do things. Um, and but yeah, it, it, it's it's with such a glut of information available. You just got to have the not even the discipline you just if you want it go get after it yeah and yeah that, that's something that is really different about the world in which you guys grew up in compared to the world i grew up in where like this kind of information of how to do something was behind a lot more closed doors than it is now like you couldn't just you know watch a youtube video on the thing you want to, the software you want to learn or whatever mm -hmm. um it was a lot more protected and with the right. advent of the internet, now, and this isn't true for everything, there's still plenty of things where you need to like really, really be taught, but for like some pretty complicated stuff, you can go watch a, a YouTube video on how yeah. to do it and, and you probably won't crush it the first time, but you'll have a building block that otherwise wouldn't have been there. Yeah, because I'm I, like, I, I suck at, at most of the things that I try, yeah, same. but uh, it's like a lot of the, uh, a, a lot of even just having like a little bit of a of us of a foot in the door there is is enough for me because I like I've been trying to learn how to code for years for you know like nine ten years and I, I've never gotten past like the most basic beginner phase but it's like I know that I eventually can do it uh, like I tell myself sometimes like I can't do coding because I suck at math and I'm like a visual learner mm -hmm. and visual brain guy not really like a technical uh you know numbers and stuff aren't aren't my strong suit but you know if you tell yourself no you can't do it then you you believe that and then that that that's right. that becomes reality well and, so, and like, you have to be willing to get through the phase of it sucking yeah and also right. yeah. not do things with the end goal of i'm going to be really great at this just like right do it and learn it because if, if One day you at a time. stopped every time you started sucking at something you would never ever learn to do anything new right and yeah, then it right. becomes a, a cycle where you're like oh well i never do anything i can't do any like it's right. self-defeating you got to get through the suck phase well and there's often and this happens a lot in in math and physics is there's like intro stuff that might not be your strong suit, but then once you get past that and kind of build up the foundation, the more advanced stuff is more like how your brain works. So there are plenty right. of, like, I know plenty of mathematicians that are fucking terrible at like arithmetic, you know, but right. they're very good at, you know, kind of big abstract problems. And so, but the way math is taught, and for pretty good reasons, is you have to get past this first blockade of like numbers and all that shit before you get to the like 
the you know the very abstract kind of thing. And so yeah, I th this happens with uh, computer science is is related to maybe it's the beginning stuff, and you don't know till you try it that is not quite how your brain works. But then when you get to the bigger type of thing that you need the the beginning stuff to form the foundation of that you might find yourself like oh my god actually this is this is kind of how i think and i just was kind of there was a wall up that i had to get over first yeah also yeah, yeah, matt yeah. if you're interested in talking about this off air there there are like you can totally boil the frog on your own programming knowledge because i'm also not a mathy programmy person but there are certain uh things that you can use that make it a oh. lot more Visual. Okay, I've been, I've been trying change. to learn Godot. I don't know if uh, you know what that is. It's not, uh, not on my end, no. Okay, sorry. Say that again. Oh, everything good? Yeah. Oh, I was just saying I, I've been trying to learn Godot, which is uh, it's it's a game engine that is quickly like becoming like one of the most popular. Uh, it's like replacing a lot of people are switching from like Unity and stuff just because it's oh. um really. Now it's uh, it's like a really really good programming language, and they make it really. You should you should look into it. It's like yeah. uh, basically like a super simplified but incredibly uh, powerful like like the, I think the new Sonic game for Switch was made with Godot. It's a uh, it's really cool. You should check it out. It's something I've been trying to learn, and the interface is incredible. Uh, yeah, I but, can't believe that I had not. I mean, I also have had my head under a rock for the past. Like, go check months. it out. I don't. I don't know if you use Unity or whatever, but I, there's a lot of videos on why people switch from Unity to Godot. And you can actually, they have their own programming language called GD Script, but you can also use like C Sharp. Mm -hmm. You can use like five different programming languages in it, and it's open source. So that's awesome. Yeah, because I started anything. learning Blender in the past few months, which being open source and also like the best just the level of access and yeah you know, more people being able to do it means i love the more 3d videos. stuff you've been making the, the little like house you did the like kitchen and the living room and stuff i love that thanks dude i i have a lot of fun doing those things and that's another thing that i was like i'm never gonna be able to do that yeah that's how i am right now with blenders i've never really like been i haven't really sat down and tried to 3d model because i'm too nervous that i'm like oh blender looks hard <laughs> my yeah. my recommendation oh. is the way that i got into it was there are a million places to get free 3d models online play with the shaders because you know you mm. you know how to use adobe suite software and like how adjustment layers work like the the shader node system yeah. is almost exactly like you know multiply well, overlay blend yeah that's 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 one of the things about godot is like the shaders are insane that you can get and there's a really big community for it. So that's, yeah, go check that out after the podcast. It's really cool. Yeah, I'm, I will. I'm going to awesome. try to, I just have a hard time. I sleep so much. I have a hard time getting into things and sticking yeah. with it. Yeah. With, with the, the music stuff, I can't remember. Did you learn any theory or is that pretty much? No, I just... still don't know any theory. Uh, I kind of have stri uh, stayed away from it because I feel like with the way my mind works, if I learn theory, then I will try to stick with it and like, mm -hmm. Uh, if if this makes sense, like I'll over I'll start overthinking the way oh, I make totally. music instead totally. of kind of just letting it flow. No, uh, absolutely, I think that's so. A I very haven't really legit. learned any theory. I kind of just try to make what I hear in my head. That's um, great. But yeah, I mean, I have I've I've been working a lot on that lately, and I have a lot of music in the can that isn't out yet. Uh, but I'm working on music videos and stuff, and yeah, I'm very excited to share it with the world. I actually have a. I'm doing a a show at the lodge room or a set in a show on Saturday. Really? Of your like you're performing it. Mm-hmm. Because that's uh, right. Because you did one like it was like a month ago. Yeah, right? yeah, I, yeah. I did one in uh, in Santa Ana, and it was like right. the first time yeah. I'd ever done music live, and it was so much fun. And it, such a such a blast. And uh, yeah, cool. I'm doing it again on Saturday. What like was your set. your setup? Uh, just just basically, uh, my buddy uh, was. DJing it kind of like running the tracks and then me him and then two other friends and we all make music so we we're all just throwing songs back and forth like swap like switching between who does like my song then his song then his song then so back you're to another one of my songs code DJ yeah and it was okay, and cool. we would just run back and forth and just kind of like sing and dance with the crowd it was really fun that's great yeah I loved it that's I'm awesome excited. dude God I'm so proud of you you're so creative and talented Thank in you, so lady. many different I'm so directions proud of you. Thanks, yeah, dude. I could say the exact same thing. In fact, I will say the exact wow. same thing about you. Wow. So uh, Ryan, I, I, I... You don't you don't even need to address it. It's okay. Right. I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's good. Uh, I think we should move on to segments. 
We should. Are, yeah. Brian, are you also seeing just two empty things that say Big Matthew and then Sweet Honest Matthew? Cause... I'm seeing a new screen that keeps appearing. <laughs> I'm getting an error then. message that says Sweet Honest Matthew is having problems. Well, act, okay, <laughs> Wait, Sweet, really? Honest, Sweet Honest Matthew just reappeared for me. Did that computer start That's up what again? Happened, yeah. That computer is, is closed. Uh, you know what I think I'm going to do? Do I don't know here. why Sweet Honest Matthew has re-entered the chat because that <laughs> computer was dead and shut. Yeah, weird. We're just going to keep it rolling and whatever happens. Yeah. Happens. Um, well, who's who's the... I don't know why Sweet Honest Matthew has rejoined the chat because no, that's not me. Neither do I. I can't wait for that's the sequel to Unfriended. Um, but, okay, he, here's... Okay, now the other window disappeared. Yeah, he's, and he says Sweet Sweet Honest Matthew's offline. Wow. So, uh, so Matt, we have two segments we do on the show. Uh, the first is a, is a pop culture recommendation segment now, and you can recommend a, a book, a movie, video game, whatever, something that you've been enjoying. Uh, given that this is episode and what now you're back. Now I you're opened up, I opened up the laptop for a second and, and, <laughs> and it was froze. Like the screen was frozen. And then I, yeah, no, I see myself again. What's going on? That's crazy. I had the laptop is shut. I would just yeah, just keep it closed. <laughs> it's closed. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna no, I'm gonna it's fine. I'm gonna take it off the desk. <laughs> I'm gonna take it off the desk and set it set it aside. It's uh, on the floor. Continue, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. So uh this is a it's a pop culture recommendation segment. You get to recommend a piece of whatever mm. you've been enjoying recently, a book, a movie, a video game, etc. Now here's the thing about this segment, and this is uh this is interesting because you're hitting us at kind of an inflection point here. Uh, this segment previously was called What's Poppin'. Now, we had someone named Brent Lilly on the show last week and Ugh. asked him to rename the segment. And oh, okay. Now, you know, Brent has many strengths. That's risky. That's well, risky, right. Well, well. Uh, Brent has many strengths. He is a, a loyal friend. He is a good business sense. He's a, a very sweet guy, but creative decisions are not his forte. So we asked him to rename our pop culture recommendation segment. And we said, because originally uh, your friend and mine, Ethan Nestor named it mm. round about episode three, I believe. Classic. Um, yeah. Classic came up with the title "What's Poppin'," and we were like, "Let's Fantastic. throw this out. Let, let's let the universe name this segment." Unfortunately, the corner of the universe we chose had Brent Lilly. In it. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. So, I think for this one, I I, I, I would like to ask you to re-rename oh, no. the segment for no. our our pop culture recommendation segment, formerly "What's Poppin'." Brent called it, and uh, you know what? Can you guess? What, what, can you guess? Yeah, yeah go ahead what and guess did, what Brent what called did it. Brent name our pop culture recommendation segment. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the the pop the pop culture recommendation part. That's cool. That's hip. You're you're, you're not terribly far off in some sense. Yeah. Um, he called it the BLB corner. The BLB corner? For Brent, Layton, and Brian. Okay. Well, that unfortunately is going to have to go. I think it's going to have to go, but I well, think... Well, if you do Brian, Layton, and Matt, it's the BLM corner. So, <laughs> I guess I can't really call it that one. Um, well, you know what? Or we're... if you mix it around, it's the MLB corner, which is Major League Baseball. And so. we don't have their express written consent, which is... No, important. no, no. Um... Well, so we're throwing this out to you. You get to re rename our Ooh. pop culture recommendation. Oh, segment. geez. Okay. What um, would what would you call this? And first thought, best thought. What are you thinking? What do you What are you feeling? What, what's What's the vibe? Hmm. Uh, let, let me let me think. I uh. So it was what's popping. It was what's popping. And then, and it, then was it was for the BLB corner. One epi now, now listen, here's the decision you actually get to make. You get to keep that name or you get to trade it out for one you like more. I get to decide to keep the BLB corner if, if I want? If you want to keep the name the BLB corner for this segment, you can keep it. Or 
you can trade it out for something you like more. And you can make Brent look like a chump. Yeah. I could I could definitely I feel like I could come up with something better. Or than- you could really stick it to us and like force us to keep this terrible fucking name for our mm. pop culture recommendation segment. A name so unmarketable that I can't think of a single good thing about it. No, it's very unmarketable, especially if the audience has never even heard of Brent. That's right. Or I'm sure they've heard of him, but you know, for the crimes and stuff, but not for the <laughs> Of course. I think uh Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, 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 gimme a second. All right. I need to bust out my 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 handy friend mm-hmm. uh, on the internet. It's a tool I like to use for ideas. Uh, let me let me let me think. So it's it's the it's the part of the the podcast where you talk about pop culture. That's correct. Man, I really <sighs> wish we had some like background music for coming up I'll, with. I'll put I'll put some in. So I got a I got a couple. Okay. Okay. You could call it the pop shop cuz you're talking shop about pop. I like that. Or you could call it a uh, Oh, you can call it the pop stop. <laughs> hey, now now on to the pop stop. We're going to talk about pop nonstop. Layden, I'm throwing to you. <laughs> what do you like? I, or I we th- could combine them. We could be the pop stop shop. Pop the nonstop. nonstop. The nonstop pop shop stop. I, I don't hate it. It's certainly no. better than the BLB corner. Nonstop you know pop, pop stop? Here, nonstop here. Pop shop. I'm going to excuse myself to pee. When I come back, you two will have made a decision. Okay. Okay, okay I'll great. Be right back. Okay. Farewell. All right, Layden, what is it? He always does this. He just he's pulling the ripcord on a bit and just making both of us do the emotional labor of coming up with the name for this segment. Yeah, it's real easy for him. Um the pop shop is 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 my best. Pop pop on top. Uh Oh. Oh, hop on pop. There you go. You guys are hopping on pop. Yeah. Pop culture. Hmm. Um. Let me let me let me let me let me think. Uh. You know, no wrong there, answers. Um, uh. What's another word for pop culture? He totally did not piss. No, there's no way he pissed that quick. <laughs> this he just is walked like out of the room. This is like, right, oh, so I'm gonna go to the yet. bathroom I'm right back. after Hold dinner. On, I have to tie my shoe. Uh. So you have a second. Can't hear you. Right. Um, Wait, it's really knotted. You have slightly longer than I thought. That this Brian, you didn't piss. <laughs> you hear anything you're saying. And like that was unbelievably no, you didn't bad. piss, Brian. That was unbelievably a short amount of some, time. To piss. Some some step no, was no omitted piss. there. No piss left your penis. I there was well, absolutely okay, no. Look, due, due to the extreme smallness of the length of my penis, the piss leaves very, very quickly. So I say, <laughs> okay, about, but, but even so, no, no, I save 30 to 45 seconds compared to a, a normal size penis. Mm, okay. That does make sense. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's, what, what's the verdict here? Well, Layton was thinking of calling it, uh, the Brent Lilly corner, <laughs> mm-hmm. which I wasn't a big mm-hmm. fan of personally. That's and then fair. she had this one other idea, but it, I, I said, okay, well, I don't know if you can actually have something with a racial slur in the title, <laughs> but she was insistent on it. Uh, yeah, dip, dip, I just, I, I wasn't a fan of that. You know, one, Matt, I was trying to be generous when you just kept I wasn't throwing out the one. like, fuck you, Brian segment. <laughs> no, but. well, well, I was, I was trying to go, go in key with what you were saying. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't really even want to say it, but mm-hmm. you know, so I actually mm-hmm. regret ever saying that, but the stuff that you went on to say was kind of was was you know a little bit important. Why is sweet honest Matthew know, back? You see that? <laughs> okay. Why? Ready? The, the, in every person, there are two wolves inside of you: <laughs> one yes. big Matthew and one, one sweet, sweet, honest, sweet Matthew. honest Matthew. I I would say I would say yes. The pop stop or the, the pop, pop stop. shop. Well, I don't the, know. It's the pop stop. From it's the pop stop. The We're pop stopping shop. and popping. The pop, pop shop. lock and drop it. Pop shop or pop. Are you stop? picking pop shop, Layton? This segment is called What's Poppin', and this is the theme song. All right, so we add that in post. 
You broke me, Brian. It took a hundred episodes, but right. you finally, finally did it. Okay, Layden, what's popping? What's popping for me is Sid Meier's Civilization Six. <laughs> oh, uh, I started playing it the other day, and then suddenly it was a couple of days later. But guess oh. what? I finally, not... I finally got a goddamn victory on Gilgamesh. I've always wanted to play that game. Uh. Choose choose a time where you don't have other shit to do, uh, and maybe like set some alarms of like, hey, it's been four <laughs> hours. This thing that I've been telling my Alexa to do of like, hey, at eleven thirty, tell me to stop. Uh, I I I uh oh okay a okay I see you were spelling out her yeah. name. I I don't okay. want to inconvenience listeners if they also have the disgusting Bezos device in their home. See Ryan and I do the opposite where we'll we'll yell out the name immediately followed by like text mom and then we'll say something <laughs> awful and then say send. <laughs> Genius actually. Or yeah. uh you know. But yeah, I I want to play Civ. It sounds like a fun game. It's you have to get over the hump of cuz I picked it up on Switch. Just humping in that game? A oh, it's for of it. Switch. Well, dude, Sid Meier was really into humping. He was a horny dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's why there's six of them. Uh, and I, I got it on Switch, which is stupid, but it was on sale. And so I was like, I need a new thing to get obsessed with because I'm so tired of Animal Crossing. And it, it was not a good experience playing on Switch, but then it was also on sale on desktop. And I watched YouTube videos where people were playing it on desktop. And I was like, wait, there, there are like fundamental parts of this game that I've like somehow missed because I can't see them immediately on the Switch UI. Anyway, um, yeah, if you want something that's just really complicated and eats hours upon hours of your time, uh, I really recommend Sid Meier's Civilization VI. Oh, okay. That's what's, that's what's popping for me. Cool. That's that's that that's Layton's pop stop. What's what pop stopping nonstop BLB in popping one of you? Matt. Brian. Uh, I'm happy to go. Uh I oh I have many things I could talk about, but I'm just gonna pick one. Uh what is popping for me this week is I am also playing a video game. A game that's a bit older that I haven't played uh for you know, I played it once, actually, on Game Rooms, and I haven't played it since. I'm talking about Diablo 3. Oh, Diablo. Which I played the first two when they came out, whenever the fuck that was. Uh, you know, 90s sometime, 90s, early 2000s. Um, and had sat on Diablo 3 because it seemed like it was mainly multiplayer, and I generally don't like multiplayer stuff. Uh, I just I have no particular interest in playing games with people I don't know. Uh, online fair yeah it's it, it's just not my thing uh and then i was reading i saw it was on for sale on the switch and i was like oh shit i never played that and the review i read was like it's not very good because mainly the good part is the story mode right. and the multiplayer isn't so great and i was like well i think you just sold me so yeah. i'm playing diablo 3 on story mode and i remember very little about diablos 1 and 2 but it's fun it also traumatized audrey oh which, no because well not not really but i told i told you not to force her to play it <laughs> she's really good at it though that's the thing um yeah these young kids are they're getting better at video games younger and younger i know so we, we just finished hyrule warriors age of calamity oh uh which despite the fact i complained about it on the show about a month ago and then i hundred percented it uh because i had gotten far enough that I was just like, fuck it, let me just bring this home. Um, and I was like, what do we play next? Diablo 3. So I was like, hey, Audrey, come come watch me play Diablo 3 if you like it. And I had forgotten that there's a lot of horror imagery in the game and it's real demony. Right. Lots of, uh, lots of, lots of demons monsters. in the game that's called Diablo. Yeah, which I should have thought about. Um, so she watched me play it for not very long and not when anything really gross. You know, we were just like setting up our character. Uh, she picked a wizard, uh, a female wizard named Arise. That was her name for it, which I thought was a pretty awesome name for it. It's pretty, pretty dope. Character. Yeah. Uh, and then we went into our first dungeon and there was a zombie and she was like, I don't think I like this. And I said, well, Honey, you, you don't have to stay here. You can leave. Are you okay with this? Yes. What's what? What's Diablo rated? 
Uh, that's a good question that I should know Pretty the sure answer it's, to. It's M, right? For, for very, sure. very possibly. Um, but so she sees the zombie and she's like, I don't know if I like this. I said, you can go. Are you okay? Yes. Are you sure you are okay? Yes. Is this going to be scary to you? No. Am I going to be hearing about this later tonight when you're trying to go to sleep? No. Are you totally, totally sure about that? Yes. I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. you can stay here while I play this. (laughs) Cut to four hours later. Daddy. (laughs) I can't sleep because I'm scared of the zombie. Classic. You're scared of the zombie? Yeah. Yeah. That zombie you said you weren't scared of. I didn't think I was scared of it, but I was. Oh, so then classic. I was like, okay, well, you're no, you can no longer watch me play this game because it's too scary for you. And I'm really glad because then it starts to get, you know, after the first 10 minutes, it actually starts to get kind of gruesome and there's like exploding corpses and stuff. Um, you, you but, gave her a little bit of that diet trauma, which is fine because it'll just make her more interesting when she's older. Yeah, it's exactly. it's the kind of thing that she in more to talk about in a few years she can be like, actually, I kind of want to see that again. Like maybe I should look at this game. So when she's like whatever eleven or twelve or something, she'll be great with it. But at seven, wasn't quite ready for, uh, for Diablo three. And also, because the other thing is, it's a lot more, you know, the graphics, this is going to come as a shock to you, got a lot better in the last 20 years. So it wasn't the late 90s, right. like kind of it cute more dungeon-y realistic. thing. It's a lot more realistic. There's a lot more blood and guts and exploding stomachs and shit. Uh, anyway, I'm having a good time playing it. Although the plot makes literally no, it's just a bunch of quests for things that, or, or demons that I have no idea who they are. Um, but I'm having a good time. So. Must a video game ever make sense? They so rarely do. This one is like, I, maybe I don't play enough games like this, but it's like, you must travel to the halls of Azrathon to grab the scepter of Lorox. <laughs> what? Okay. And then you go get it. And it's not, a, by the way, this game is like fucking easy as shit too. It's like, there's nothing really? hard going. Oh yeah. Um, at least the way I'm doing it. Cause I'm very good. Uh, and like you, you're just kind of going through the motions, following these little quests, which are not particularly rewarding. So anyway, oh. but I'm having fun and I'm almost done with it. That's what's popping for me, Matt. Okay. Fun. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, hold well, on. I... I need you to to address him correctly. You have two options. Yes. Sweet, well, you know honest which one you're Matthew. talking to. Sweet, nope. honest Matthew. Wrong one. Big Matthew. Big Matthew. What's popping? Is the one in the chip? Well, sweet, honest Matthew is present apparently uh-huh. again just popped up his spirit i just want to hear what sweet honest matthew has to say i'll do one i mean both both of them can can give one uh you guys might laugh at me and this this one's gonna come out of left field okay Mm -hmm. i have been enjoying a certain piece of television tell us uh, a certain piece of television that you might not expect uh big matthew to say he's been watching oh i wonder if we can guess you you get one guess Hmm. The Golden Girls spinoff Golden Palace. Nope. Layton? My 600 pound life. Well, I actually was going to say a TLC show. Oh. Okay. I, I was going to say I was going to say uh the new season of 90 Day Fiance, but what what I was going to say actually is I've quite been in, enjoying uh Desperate Housewives. Quite okay. quite a bit. You got a little uh, bit of Kyle MacLachlan in there, right? I watched. I watched. Uh, I'd never watched Desperate Housewives, uh, and I had a friend over, and she was like, "Let's watch Desperate Housewives," and I was like, "Really? No, I don't. I really don't want to watch Desperate Housewives. I didn't know anything about it." So watched the first episode, and I was like, "Okay, we can put the second one on." And then I watched the whole first season, and it's it's pretty 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 fun show. I'm not gonna lie; it's not what I thought it was gonna be. I thought Desperate Housewives would just be a bunch of Desperate Housewives, but it's got drama. Mm-hmm. It's got comedy. Yep. It's got guns and they 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 actually kill characters off. It's pretty it's pretty fun. I I, hmm. I enjoyed the first season quite a bit. And this is this this was on like fifteen years ago. Yeah, right? yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but it's it's uh not yeah it it gets an okay from me. The other thing would be 
90 Day Fiance, which one of my favorite shows. 90 Day is Fiance it, is pretty great. I haven't watched it. It really is. is? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So many people good. say this and I've never seen it. Unbelievable. It's just it's just watching watching people's relationships fall apart. Well, yeah. you could just and, come over to my house if you want to see that. Yeah. Well, but see also the, the thing is you just see how stupid these people are in this show. They just make the worst decisions possible. Well, also, I guess I could go over to your house and see that as well. Yeah. You know, this, uh, this yeah. is kind of like a perfect full circle because I think on one of our very first episodes, I recommended 90 Day Fiance, but I watched whatever season it is that has Anfisa, uh, who was just an absolute icon, who would have become like a one, health actually. YouTuber. It's one of the earlier seasons, I think. Yeah, I, I've, I only got in later, but I've seen like all the recent seasons and then all the spinoffs like before the 90 Days and The Other Way and The Single Life yeah. and... It's fantastic and I, stuff. I only spitballed 600 pound life because I actually have watched. It's been a weird like. It, yeah, that show is that show. Is DLC that, does make some good stuff. That's a show about people who weigh 600 pounds or one yeah. specific yeah. person. Yeah. And yeah. going it's, to get like extreme weight loss surgery from Dr. Now. Um, yeah. It's 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 interesting to me because of how quickly it plops you into just like ridiculous complicated emotional mental health relationship dynamics where mm. it's like this is just like networks of enablers and everything and like let's make it better by shoving in a, a reality tv crew right in the middle of it yeah um it's a nightmare but tlc man they really keep you coming back they do they got some great stuff the they got some great shows on there. I started watching Ancient Aliens uh, the other night, like from episode one. Like I mean, old, I know you old would love era? it, Brian. Very scientific. Yeah. No, yeah, no, that's season. like, you know, as a physicist, that shit's true. Like that, mm -hmm. that you know, it, it's, it's well researched and backed up. I think that Rogan yeah. guy would might agree with you on that. He might. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. But that's, that's why that's 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 what's popping in the pop shop this week. I love it. I'm going to pop till I drop, baby. Um, Leighton, do you want to introduce our next and final segment? Oh, yeah. Um, our final segment that's staying the same uh, is I called... Do you name this one? It's... No, you don't, get to, you don't get to name this one. Can I, can, I, can I piss real quick? Yes, of course. May I urinate? <laughs> yes. I, I've been drinking hella LaCroix this, this yeah. recording session. Yeah, go for it. I'm on my yep. third LaCroix. All right. I'll BRB. This, it's, the bathroom's right next to me, so... That's cool. Hey, you might even be able to hear it. <laughs> I think this is a new record for how many times a guest has pissed. You guys can hear it. Patreon exclusive. <laughs> Wait for it. I'm shy. I believe in you. You can do it. There it is. All right. There you are. We could definitely hear that. Pishing that accomplished. <laughs> uh, I believe that is the episode title. That was actually pretty painful for some reason. Hmm. All right. Well, this got it too, no, sometimes too thick it, in my never mind. Yeah. Sometimes it comes out thick. <laughs> what's 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 this last segment? <clears throat> Hold on. No, I don't think I will. <laughs> Click. <laughs> <laughs> My dream is to hang up on a guest mid-episode. My dream is for a guest to hang up on us, which yeah. actually sort of happened this episode multiple times already. <laughs> well, I didn't. Sweet Honest Matthew did, but... Yeah. Oh, you blame Sweet Honest Matthew for fucking everything. All right, our final segment is one that's... Oh, my God, I forgot how we... Uh, 
uh, 100 episodes going strong. Uh, we say three good things and then one thing that's kind of a bummer. And the segment is called Peaches and Lemons Happy 100th Episode Theme Song Goes Here. Great. So, Fucking nice song. got him. Thanks. All right. So we're each going to start with a lemon, which is a thing that is a bummer. Or like but mild, like a mild bummer. Mild inconvenience. A thing that is a... Hold on. My toilet is making sound. I got to shut the door. I have a bidet and it's decided to start whirring its little motor. Um, Fun way for something... you to flex that you have a bidet. Uh, it's, it's like, hey, flex. everybody, my asshole's super clean. Oh. That's I, I'm flexing the fact that I have a clean asshole, not that I have a bidet. I have a bidet, too. They're not, they're not expensive. I you have know, a... people, people see it as some fancy thing, it's but over true, in Europe, not. everyone has it. In Japan, everyone has it. It's just right. a, it just I, I don't see it's it's America has made people believe that if you have a bidet you're a rich douchebag that's but that's right. just corporate America trying to keep people down with dirty assholes they don't yeah. want people to have clean assholes I they, want a clean asshole they've normalized having a real dirty uh who's mm, got a lemon okay. mm, mm, just anything right now yeah Here, anything one, one of us can go first Brian, do you have uh, one? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, I need. I. I no, actually, I don't have one. All right, think fine. One. So my lemon. First. My lemon is that you know I, I've tried to be better about not being on social media or like looking at the internet, and I've fallen back into like my lemon is just Reddit. Like it's so hard mm. to not look at Reddit or like sink time into Reddit. It's just yeah. I, you. You do your little patrol, and then you feel bad, and then it's been like I two hours. Yeah. So. That's my lemon. It's less Reddit itself and more just like my own lack of self control. Mm. So that's yeah. I feel, oh, I feel that for sure. Yeah, I've been trying to get in shape, and that's that's been a tough one. That's hard. Um, my lemon is a uh, is a uh, uh, give give me give me a second. Um, yeah, my uh, there's a crack in my windshield in my car. Mm -hmm. that I don't know how it got there. I parked my car outside the Super Megaplex one day and I came outside. Massive crack in my windshield. Ugh. No idea where it came from. Hello, sweet, honest Matthew. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, uh, but now it's grown much bigger. I thought I could ignore it at first, but now it's like over half my windshield just... <laughs> so oh, I probably no. got to take it in uh, soon and then have to pay for that, which is not fun because it's probably going to be expensive. So that's my lemon, baby. That's, 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 that's Big Matthew's lemon. You nailed it. Uh, I actually couldn't think of one, but I, I guess I'll do a, a slightly bigger one. Uh, my lemon is, where, is just being back in this fucking phase of the pandemic where as yes. a parent, there are no right answers anymore, mm -hmm. as was true for a while. But it's like, it's like, do you send the kid to whatever? Like, you know, it, Audrey has a, uh, we signed up for a baking class. Do we send her to the baking class? Like it's just like every every decision right. now. We're back to this fucking thing where it's like, well, it's probably going to be fine. And I'm not going to send her to like, you know, the to, to maskless screaming practice. Mm. But uh, <laughs> but there's all sorts of like normal things that you have to fucking worry about all the time now. And it's so, I, I'm just so bummed to be back in this place. Does I mean aside from that, does it like? mentally emotionally feel like early 2020 because i feel like it that, does a little bit like my like getting brains smacked back down uh honestly not to me because of the vaccines and everything else that we have that 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 are weapons we di didn't have to fight against covid that we do now uh i understand the comparison but it is so materially different um sure in that you know n now like i when I got COVID last month, uh, by making out with Brent, it was it, it mm. wasn't too bad because he get, it's I always had, something he gives always, when you make out I with know, him. It's always something. Always something. Co just, COVID being on the lesser end, luckily. Well, believe me. Um, the but it was you know I had three shots. I was like, well, I'm probably going to be fine, and I was totally fine. Well, yeah, uh, three shots will lead to making out with Brent. I'll tell you that. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but so but so 
I understand the comparison. To me, it feels so different because now we have all these tools and just I, understanding I, I, so I don't much mean more. materially. I'm not like, oh, we're right back at 2020. But in terms yeah, yeah. of like where my brain was and how I felt about the world. And despite I, I was talking about this with a friend the other day and like the it's weird to have like tangibly developed as a person person mentally and emotionally and be in a much better place with more complex ways of thinking about things and then it'd be yeah. like ah shit's basically the same yeah, yeah. Um, and it's uh I, i'm just like it sucks because i was talking to ryan about this how it's like i i the whole pandemic i've been in the mindset where it's like oh you know like five six months out it'll be better but it keeps not and i'm like should i just accept that like by 2024 it's still gonna be like this no no it, it's it, it's really not i think i i i if, you know who knows, of course, but this shit could have been done in like a month. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty optimistic. It could have been done by April 2020. Yeah, I and I it. feel everyone keeps saying that they're very optimistic, and I don't know if it's just that I have depression, but I am about as far from optimistic about shit. Well, I mean, it's it, the track record so far is, well, has just been. I don't think people. I'm not optimistic about people the vaccine behaving is differently. Good. I'm optimistic that. This very well might be the last big wave we have of COVID. Like, I would love that. That is not this at YouTube all off video. The table. Is well, so many get people have it. For... Yeah. Oh, Ryan and I talk about it all the time, and we never get flagged. Yeah. Oh, that, that I, was. Does this joke. go on YouTube? Yes. Yeah, we put it on YouTube. Nice. Um, we totally put so much maintenance into our YouTube <laughs> channel. Same. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think you know people aren't gonna change how they're behaving at this point that's kind of locked yeah in. but no it's it's done i i do think that this may i mean who knows this may be the last big 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 wave we have and i, ho right. I hope that's the case i'm i'm hoping so too because also so many people have had it now that hopefully the immunity right. is as as built and also well the, i think everyone that's got vaccinated is gonna i don't think there's gonna be that many more people getting vaccinated yeah, if you haven't gotten vaccinated already well, I, and also in you know, like the, you know, the retroviral kind of pills and stuff are going to get better and better and will be widely mm -hmm. available mm -hmm. pretty soon. Uh, you know, we're going to start to get regular, probably vaccines, I would guess, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Listen, man, I'm just trying to get through stuff. the fucking day, just day yeah. by, it's like survive yeah. today. It's, mm -hmm. I can't yeah. really think much further than that. And also before all of this, I have a weird, you know brain thing where it's like you're gonna die in three months like that's just a thing that my brain does in a normal world and so it does really great stuff to your ability to plan <laughs> yeah, of for the future and yeah. feel good about <laughs> life crazy you know yeah. clinical anxiety yeah. all right well, that well, sucks <laughs> i think <laughs> I knew that, that was a big one. i think you very successfully maybe for the first time turned lemon lemons into the exact thing that we wanted them to not be that's what i do baby all right it's it, remember when we said if biden won the election we'd start actually doing lemons again yeah it's biden's america baby we're, that's on, right. episode, we're on episode uh, 100 yeah so i'm 100. feeling gayer than ever i'll tell you what <laughs> amen brother the water it's making me gay uh all right peaches peach time all right i'll say so well I'll, so Matt, these are we do three of these, three of them. Yeah, Jesus Christ. You gotta okay, work for it. Uh, so these are three good things, three things you're yeah. happy about or like or whatever. Okay, uh, three of them. Let me think. Um, do you want one of us to go first? I uh, I got this, bro. Do uh, it. Three of them, things that I that I've liked lately. Uh, I I've I feel like I've been in a very good place creatively and I've I've really liked what I've been working on personally and also uh I've just had a lot of fun creating stuff uh like this podcast. Uh another one is I've been finally getting my house together like since I moved in in like May. I've been I've had this idea of what my pl what I want my place to be and it's finally starting to actually get there slowly but surely. Awesome. And then the last one is I've been I love space so much. And uh, I've been real excited about the James Webb Dude, telescope it's the best. launch and, and how it's been successful so far. Crushing, not knock on wood. And uh, and I'm and I just can't wait to see what we're gonna see with the with that telescope. Maybe we'll see some some signs of life out there. I just I, I can't wait to see the pictures and stuff we're gonna. Embarrassingly, see. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Once again, so, I don't look at anything. Matt, do you want to explain this? Yeah, it's it's basically the James Webb Space Telescope is this telescope that's been in production for like. 15 years or something kept getting delayed 10 billion dollars but it's it's this telescope that's like 
incredible, like blows the Hubble out of the water. Yeah. And they finally launched it after a million years of delays. Uh, and now it's like slowly opening up in space bit by bit, which is very stressful because something could go wrong. I mean, it's fucked. But they're sending it out a million miles out into space to this point called L2, which is like the, a certain distance from, from Earth. It's a Lagrange uh, point. Yeah. Yeah. It's a and, stable orbit, essentially. And then from there, it's going to start taking pictures of uh, basically like it's it's kind of like seeing back in time. So they're going to be able to hopefully see like pretty much like the first galaxies forming with it because they look back in time at like w basically the Big Bang. What the uh, fuck? And they're, they're also going to be able to use it just to take crazy pictures of of distant galaxies and nebulas and, and yeah. planets. And, That's fucking crazy. And it's gonna they're, be... gonna, they're gonna look at that Kepler system, I think, that is has like a lot of habitable planets. They're gonna look at that. It's one of the first things, and I'm just very excited just to see, because I, 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 I'm a big space head. It's gonna be great for a lot of things. Cosmology in particular, you know, is, so there's a big, there are lots of mysteries in cosmology right now. And cosmetology. Uh, yes, of course, in cosmetology. A lot of mysteries there. Like. Like, how do you get your face to look like that is a, is the biggest one. Huge mystery. Um, but in, in cosmology, there's this thing going on right now called the Hubble tension, where there's a, a number, which is essentially the rate of expansion of, uh, of the universe. And there are two very reliable but conflicting values for it. It's called, and no one knows what the right answer is. And it's like, it is a, a big mystery right now in cosmology what this parameter is and if you look up hubble tension you can you can learn more about it but i hope that uh we get some good data from this that helps yeah. uh helps resolve that yeah um hopefully also you know there's this bigger question i don't know if it'll say anything about it about uh what's called dark energy yeah which is not I, dark. I was just about to bring that up yeah it's not dark matter dark matter is kind of much more tractable in a sense that's matter we know is out there but can't see, although we don't know what it is. It's a big mystery. We have no dark, idea. Yeah, dark energy, essentially the expansion of the universe. For the Patreon, for the Patreon. Cheers. Oh, I should have, I should have. Uh, the universe, the expansion of the universe is accelerating mm -hmm. and because of some kind of pressure that's pushing it out, the thing that's causing that people usually call dark energy and no one has any fucking clue what it is. Yeah, that's wild that like we just have no clue. Like it's just so far beyond us. Still. And the crazy, crazy part from a theoretical physics standpoint is when you try to guess what the value would be, you get a number that is like wildly wrong. If you just like based on kind of general principles, like guess what it is, you get something that is so incredibly wrong that there there has to be something else going on. Uh, that's awesome. So hopefully we get some insight into that. And it's possible that we just, you know, it's possible this is just kind of the universe we live in and there's no yeah. good answer might, for it. Like, it's just what it, it could is. Be, it could be like literally in another realm that like we can't, we can't, like our brains can't even it, process. It, well, it's not even that. It's just like some things about the universe. There's a big question of like, if you understand the general principles, can you kind of figure out what's happening with our universe? And one possible answer is it's not that we can't understand it. It's just that the universe we live in has these certain parameters and there's no really good reason for it. And that's just what it is. Yeah. Uh, and that might be the case. The good Lord made it that way. That's kind of right. Yeah. Like yeah. it's just the universe we live in. So hopefully we get some answers from uh, James. Yeah. Right. I'm just very excited. It, I mean, it has a short, pretty short yeah. shelf life, only like 10 years. But it's going to be amazing, dude. There, well, there's another big telescope coming after that that's going to be like replacing the Hubble that's that's much better uh that will have a longer shelf life. I forgot what it's called. It's yeah. it's a woman's name. Yeah, I can't remember either. You're not talking about it's not the Lisa thing, is it? Uh I don't remember. It's a it's a telescope that's coming in the either late 20s or I think late 20s and it's yeah. it's cuz talk Lisa about breaking like the glass the ceiling. I mean Lisa is girl a dark boss. matter. Is a dark matter. Thing. No, anyway. it's not it's not a dark okay. matter thing. It's a But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Peaches. Layton, you got some peaches? Yeah. My first peach is that after like days and days of playing Civ, I finally got a victory last night. Nice. Um, I can't tell you how satisfying that shit was. Everybody else, go fuck yourselves. I built a rocket. So that's my first peach. Uh, my second peach 
is one that I literally cannot talk about on this show, but both of you know what it is. And oh, it's the, great. The pregnancy? Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My third peach is that I hung out with Aaron and Susie, we went and saw Scream. We had some Tres Leches cake that Susie made. Ooh. Uh, oh, yeah. I saw you guys went and saw Scream. Yeah. It was a lovely time, and I love to see my friends, and also all their cats love me now and will mm. immediately come and say hi, which is like big old progress. This is years love those cats. of yeah. progress. Otto will like fully let me love on him, uh, oh, and love I love that, Otto. that big, He's... big, boofy boy. Those beautiful deformed cats. <laughs> <laughs> They're the best. Anyway, They're those so are... genetically messed up. <laughs> <laughs> those are my peaches. Brian. Yes. Do you have peaches? I do. Uh, peach number one, first peach. Uh, last weekend, this past weekend, was the MIT Mystery Hunt, which mm. is my favorite puzzle solving thing. Happens every year at MIT. Normally I'd go out there, but it was remote last year and this. But it's mainly an excuse to hang out with old college friends and other newer friends uh, and solve some really fun and inventive puzzles. Oh, that's cool. And we got a lot of them. We had a great time. It was it was awesome. It's just, it is the kind of the highlight of my year. Uh, it's, it, 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 it's just the best, you know, it's, that sounds awesome. Yeah. It's just endlessly fun. Um, peach number two is, uh, I now live with a capital G gamer. Oh, who, uh, is obsessed with all things Zelda. And I has... knew Rachel was getting into Zelda. I knew <laughs> <it>. <laughs> and, you know, I, honestly though, Rachel is like, original Zelda fan has played a lot more than I have, but Audrey. Now we've been letting her, we let her watch playthroughs and also game stops uh, channel. She watches super mega now. <laughs> yes. She loves super mega. She keeps ah. asking me about why Brent's penis smells so bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we're all asking that Brian. Yeah, well, believe me. Um, <laughs> but she, so we let her watch uh game stops YouTube channel. Cause it's pretty kid friendly. And so now I live with someone where if there's a silence of any length, she will just start spouting Zelda facts at me. And <laughs> so I'll be, I was driving her to school the other day and we were listening to the Encanto soundtrack, which is a current favorite. Uh, I have here. heard of that. It's that it's epic. It's uh, she, she loves it. And so I was trying to explain to, There's a line about Cerberus and I was trying to explain to her about that. And she was like, Oh yeah. You know, and, and that, that makes sense that, that Hercules would fight, uh, would fight Cerberus. Yeah, because Cerberus is a dog. And did you know, if you go up to the top of Mount Lanairu and you take Daruk up there, and it's like, and then we're suddenly talking about Zelda for <laughs> whatever reason. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and she is now playing Breath of the Wild again. But it's just very nice. cute to see her enthusiasm for, for this video game. And she loves it. And every night she wants, here's, here's what happens every night. Uh, she wants stories. She wants a story told. So I tell essentially the same story to her every night. If she wants a Zelda story, there are other stories she wants to, which is about uh, Daruk, who's a Goron and loves to eat rocks. It is the constant attempts of uh, Daruk to serve Link rocks for dinner. And Link cannot eat or digest rocks and comedy ensues. So, nice. I nice. love that. What are, what are uh, you going to do when Audrey gets to an age where she realizes that her dad wrote a song about Legend of Zelda, what a song? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I can I can never have children because oh my God, dude. The, the things that I've I've done. And I think and said all the time life. about the first moment where my probably you know let's say ten year old daughter uh, who's still in uh, I love Mario and Zelda kind of phase finds Star Bomb and listens to. All of the fucking songs we wrote about the very graphic sexual acts <laughs> perpetrated by these characters. Yeah, yeah. And like, and then can't look me in the eye. You know, <laughs> that's why I can't have kids, dude. It's yeah. Like, what, what what do I do? The honest thing is that she'll probably be a million times funnier than I am and write her own versions of those songs, which are better than anything I could do. That's true. So yeah. But no, I, I believe me. I, I I think a lot about what is going to happen when that happens, and it's not far away. It's not like yeah. in a year, but it's less than five years for yeah. sure. She's so. a smart it's, kid, right? Right. 
It's 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 on the way. It's a it's a talk it's it's a talk you gotta prepare for. Yeah. You're not allowed to use the internet till you're eighteen. Maybe that maybe that's the strategy. I actually think um, that should be the rule for literally every human on this yeah, planet. It's, you it's, shouldn't be allowed online unless you have a license. It's not a bad idea. Um anyway, my final peach is that this is our hundredth episode. And oh. I'm very proud am, of you guys. Thank you. It, it's it's dude, it's so great to have you here. And Leighton, it's been so much fun to do this with you. And uh, it's it's kind of what you said, Matt. Like I never, I never worry about running out of things to talk about, or you know, or having interesting guests, or or anything like that. Uh, I think we're just getting started, and it's been a really fun first hundred, and I'm excited for the future. Yeah, yeah here's well, to thank you for having hundred. me. Thank you for having me for the hundredth. I feel very honored, and uh, it's been fun. I really, I really enjoyed all the conversations from from shitting pants to to talking about you know space telescopes and and all that good stuff i would i would categorize this one as you know we have a couple of different like genres of late night episode falls firmly in the chaos genre pretty Uh, chaotic but fun always those are the best episodes the chaos episodes yep yeah yeah dude thank you again for being here this was a lot of fun yeah dude i I love you and i miss being around you so very deeply so it would well it it would be really funny if you had a party or something yeah i was about to say like hypothetically like uh like imagine the joke it would be if i did have a party and then put out like a bunch of i saw like a bunch of like super photoshop pictures yeah online (laughs) everybody everybody hanging out looking like they do pretty much this week yeah that'd be wild yeah that would be crazy brian well, if you need someone to come tell you about Zelda facts, Audrey is available. Okay. That sounds great, man. Yep. Fantastic. All, all right. So I, I guess that brings us to the end of the first, like this I, is not only the end of this that's episode. That's the end of the first hundreds. We're pinching off a century. <laughs> Boom, baby. So, Congratulations, guys. That's a big milestone. At you. the end of my first 100th episode is when we, I, we, first unveiled the song about me having sex with my dad so (laughs) yeah something i wish had never come into existence but (laughs) what can you do now right what what can you do yeah oh yeah well folks at home Mm -hmm. thank you for being here throughout this whole hundo and uh oh my god the pressure of saying something you're all good thanks for having ears and for listening to the show thank you both for being here um can and, can hey, we yes huh? please, please please no go ahead what what can were you we? gonna say i was gonna say my new catchphrase <gasps> oh I'm stay in school oh okay yeah, that, that one's okay i dropped out of school so well I so mean, did layton yeah yeah so <laughs> stay don't in look school, at the guys. camera all right um everybody you're great take care of yourselves Stay flirty, fun, and fresh. And folks. Hey, man, my landlord's calling me. I don't, I'm not going to pick that up. <laughs> Perfect timing. I don't never know pay why rent. He's calling me. He never, well, he never calls me, so. Rent uh, is a tool of the patriarchy. Don't pay it. Okay, that's true. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk to my landlord. Sorry. Hell yeah. All right, everybody. Something, something, uh, come. See you next Bye. time. Bye. Bye. Bye.